All right, let's get started. Good afternoon. I am Danny Wexelman, sideline reporter for MLR, and I am so proud and excited to have been asked by Major League Rugby to serve as moderator for this afternoon's media availability. So this is such an exciting day, one that we've been looking forward to for so long. Major League Rugby has announced the full schedule for the 2021 MLR season. So this afternoon, we will be joined by George Killebrew, Commissioner for Major League Rugby, Elaine Vassy, Dallas Jackals Assistant GM and Assistant Coach, Lucas Rumble, Flanker for the Toronto Arrows, and Lance Williams, Flanker for the Utah Warriors. Without further ado, let's welcome in the Commissioner of Major League Rugby, George Killebrew. George, hello, welcome. Thank you, Danny, how you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to see you and have you here. Um, Listen, this is your second season at the helm for MLR. How excited are you to be announcing the schedule for 2021? Well, obviously, we're really excited. Um, You know, last season, you know, we had to shut it down after five weeks due to COVID. But, you know, all of the economic indicators that sports leagues and sports teams are judged by were on their way up you know, from ticket sales to sponsorship to broadcast. Our TV ratings were greater. Our OTT followings were greater. So it was really frustrating after week five to have to shut down, which makes us even more excited to be here today getting ready for 2021. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to start with partnerships and MLR's relationship with national broadcast affiliates. Can you share the details of these partnerships for the upcoming season? Yeah, we're excited to announce we'll be doing 36 total matches nationally through our partnerships with CBS Sports and with Fox. You know, CBS Sports has been an initial partner of Major League Rugby going back to the beginning. And Billy Stone, who runs CBS, has been a great partner to this league. So fast forward to August 1st, the last two teams standing will be on what I like to say big CBS on network in prime time on August the 1st. So we're delighted about that half of the partnership. The other half of the partnership with Fox Sports is gonna be great as well. We got a couple matches in last year on FS2 and are really excited you know, moving into this season to do 17 with them as well. I can hear the excitement in your voice. I feel the same exact way. I'm so excited. Um, and I know there's so much planning that goes into the up, upcoming season. So how did you plan for this season while being mindful of COVID? Yeah, obviously, you know, safety is at the forefront when it comes to COVID. So that's safety for our, our players, our coaches, our staffs, and of course our fans. And so really everything we've done kind of leads towards that. And, you know, in sports, if you, if you follow any of the leagues, if you're a fan at all of any sport, you know that it pretty much changes daily. And so you're watching the news daily. We're watching the people that have gone before us, like the NFL and college football. And we're, we're trying to gain the best practices from those. You know, we have a COVID task force at Major League Rugby that meets weekly, uh, that has league personnel as well as, well as medical personnel. So we're just doing our best to stay up to speed and and really try to get ready for 2021 as best we can in an ever-changing environment. And what makes you the most excited? What are you most looking forward to with the 2021 season? Well, you know, if we're, if we're, we're having a discussion on August the 2nd, means that we got through 16 weeks of matches and we played the finals on August the, the 1st on CBS. And that gets me the most excited. If we can, you know, operate this season without a lot of hiccups. Now, there's going to be hiccups, just so you know. There's going to be change. Um, we're We're not operating in normal times. But if we can get to the end and get all 16 matches in across the league per team and get to the finals and have a great television event on CBS on August the 1st, then I'm going to be really excited. There is, there's so many things to be excited about, George, with this season. And another one of those things are two new teams, Los Angeles and Dallas. How do those markets add to the league? Well, they're very significant. I mean, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Los Angeles are in the top five media markets in the United States. So now we have teams in all five of the top five, 
and we have teams in seven of the top 10 media markets across the US. So it's very significant. Um, you know, we are in all the places we want to be. There's some places we're not in that we're talking to for 2022 and beyond. But the additions of Los Angeles and Dallas are really significant for Major League Rugby. Awesome, George. Thank you so much. I am going to move on now to Elaine Vassy, speaking of Dallas and one of those new teams. Elaine, trailblazing throughout the sport and the first female named as an assistant GM in MLR history. How excited are you to be in Dallas? Thanks, Danny. Um, yeah, really excited. I first came out to Dallas in 2013 to coach. And I think was just overwhelmed by the passion that there was in Texas for sport and then more specific the local DFW rugby community and how engaging and welcoming they were to me and my family and I think the sense then was always when will professional rugby come to Dallas not if so to be here now sharing that experience with that community that, that's a huge privilege uh, going into next season for sure. And we can't overstate what it means to have the first female assistant GM in MLR history. And I want to talk about that. But first, can you speak about your responsibilities as assistant GM and assistant coach? Yeah, so um, I think that's a great question in terms of us as a new franchise and the setup process. A lot of my role originally is looking at the search and the appointment uh, of our director of Alan Clark. We're really excited to get his boots on the ground here soon. Uh, and then working with him over the past eight months, building out his management team, uh, looking at the recruitment of our players. We'll have, between he and I, looked at over a thousand players uh, to see the roster that you'd see listed on our, our website as of today. Um, and then I guess on the off-field side of things, that's really been about league compliance, looking at the contracts and our players, the visa processes, our medical agreements, um, and then actually getting the opportunity to re-engage with our rugby community here, which is a great experience and obviously, there's COVID factors currently, but I think giving them an indication of what our plans are for our pathway, specifically for domestic players in the coming years has been really exciting. I was reading a lot about that and I'm wondering how your vast background with player development will enhance your team. I think it, for us, one of the things that really drew me to the Jackals is actually the passion for domestic development. I think that's shared with Alan Clark coming in. Um, and that's part of on a really personal level why I love the opportunity to be in the States right now. There's such an athletic pool. Um, rugby is a new, exciting, growing sport. And I think the potential that's got to continue over the coming years, I don't think we can predict how greatly that's going to be. Um, so to have that opportunity and work with those players and help enhance those opportunities, that's exactly the sort of thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. And as far as trailblazing, this isn't a first for you, um, but what does it mean for you and for all the young women who want to be involved, want to be in a position of power, that you are the first female in your role? You know, what does that say to them and what do you want them to know? I think um, I probably always struggled with that question, if I'm totally transparent, because I think you, you are so focused on just wanting to be the best version of yourself, whoever you are and, and what that means to you know, help improve and get yourself better. I think at the same time, there's real value in people being able to look, uh, whether that's someone's gender, their race, their, their background, and see similarities with themselves. And actually see that's a, it makes it easier to make the link from where you are at and where you wanna be. So if that helps someone along the way, then yeah, that's awesome. I think that's a great answer to that question. Um, as far as team preparation goes, Elaine, what does that look like right now? But also, how does that evolve over the next few months? Yeah, I think uh, probably different challenges for us as a, as a new team coming in and, and, you know, not having the normal, I guess, exhibition season that we would have liked and probably a slightly shorter preseason. Um, but really, we're, we've got a real confidence in the players that we've brought in and them wanting to be here and be the best version of themselves. So a big focus for us has been helping them engage with each other, even though we're remote at the moment, and then looking to our S&C staff to support those players so we can have them arriving in the best condition to actually play rugby. So when we're here, actually, it's we can, we can hit the ground running and get into our shapes and our structure and who we want to be as, as the inaugural Jackals team. And from your perspective, for fans who aren't as familiar with rugby, what do you think will draw them to Dallas and the Jackals? 
I think the constant action in rugby is the thing that really separates it. The tempo of the game, the high engagement as a spectator you get to have through the duration of the 80 minutes that we play for. Um, and I think once people get familiar with this sport, actually what we'll then start to see on another level is the uniqueness of it in terms of the values and how we as rugby players, rugby coaches, rugby supporters engage and embody those on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's a really nice uh, added thing that underpins uh, what people will see within rugby. And lastly, Elaine, you've had a chance to see the schedule now. Any key matchups that you're looking forward to in 2021? I think I'd actually had quite a few text messages heading into the schedule release with a number of people very excited about the possibility of the opening being us and LA. So there's certainly an excitement in the area for that. Uh, I think we're really focused on what we can control at the moment in terms of our processes and bringing our team together. Um, but it'd be remiss not to mention we're the only sport, uh, state with three teams in the MLR. So obviously having our neighbours in Austin and Houston, having a Texas Cup in its own right, uh, that's an added kind of exciting opportunity for us and everyone here in Texas. Awesome. Elaine, thank you so much. I am going to bring in and welcome Toronto Arrows flanker, Lucas Rumble. Lucas, hi. Hi, Danny. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here. And I got to know, you've seen the schedule. What are you most excited about for the 2021 season? Honestly, it's uh, pretty simple for me. I'm sure it's the same for everyone else. It's just getting back to some sense of normalcy. You know, it's going to be simply training, working hard with the guys. It's been a while since we've been able to do that. So I'm really just excited to get back into it, hit a great preseason and get into the season running. So your team had a very hot start last season and you told me in Vegas that it was a dream to represent Canada and that you didn't mind being the nice guys, but I don't think your team was very nice on the field, so to speak, in a good way, right? So what do you think it will take to repeat what you were able to do at the beginning of last season this coming March? I think uh, just sticking to the same plan and building on what we did last year. You know, we brought a ton of the same guys back, so that team culture and that team cohesiveness will be back this year again, which we're known for. And our front office did a great job signing great new talent, guys who bring energy, pace, and skill to our team. It's excited to, you know, start working with them in January. And throughout this off season, what have you been working on? What's been um, part of your commitment or part of your goals for the off season? I think it was just, you know, to, to stay with it. It's so easy, you know, during COVID to kind of just get frustrated with everything and stop doing things. But for me, I think just sticking with it, whether that's working out, going for a run, you know, checking in with a buddy. And I think I did a good job of that over this uh, period of time. And, and hopefully that's done me well going into preseason. And I'm going to ask you the same question. So you, you've seen the schedule now, but how does it change your mentality and how you physically prepare for 2021? Uh, I don't think it changes too much. I think, you know, we start pushing harder the closer we get towards that start date. But for us, it's, it's really about sticking to the process and getting, you know, the team together and working on ourselves. Uh, the schedule, I think, lets us put in the detail week to week now of, you know, we're facing this opponent or that opponent. What are they good at? What can we do to beat them on that day? So I think just the detail aspect of it will change. Awesome. Lucas, stick around. Um, I am going to move on to Lance Williams. Lance, welcome. How are you? Hey, Danny, thanks for having me. Hi, Lance. Um, Lance, part of the Utah Warriors. Um, you are their flanker. Lance, I know that life has been busy for you. So on top of playing rugby, you also teach children with special needs and that emphasizes your passion for putting others first. So you've got a lot going on. How do you balance that and rugby? Um, I balance it all pretty well. Um, I kind of treat them, there's like a two sides of me, I uh, switch on and off on the, um, on the rugby field. But um, when I'm with my kids or my students, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, uh, I put them first. I always, um, I treat them like they're, they're my own kids, um, you know, trying to further their education and um, better themselves in the classroom and, and stuff like that. So I'm always, when I'm with my, with my students and with my kids, when I work with my kids, I always, you know, focus on them first and trying to 
better themselves uh, every day when I see them and, you know, put my 100% of uh, a time within them. And um, when school is done, when I'm, you know, when everything is done and I can settle in at rugby practice, I'm locked in 100% um, with all the details and stuff with when it comes to rugby. So I balance it out pretty well. And when practice is done, I do my paperwork and stuff like that. And then I watch film and, you know, there's two sides of it, but whenever it's kind of, I treat them as family. So when, when it's family time, when it comes to my kids, I put hundred percent of my attention to my kids. And then when it comes to rugby time, I switch on and I just focus on rugby. I love that. So Lance, as one of the top players in the league and, and balancing everything that you do have going on, how rigorous is your mental and physical preparation to play rugby? Um, well, it, it, this this year was pretty was pretty difficult. Um, so, with the ending season injury in the, uh, in January, um, all the preparations was was slightly different. Um, so I had to do surgery and rehab, and then uh, when after all that was done with my surgery, when I get when I had to go back to work, uh, they couldn't go back to work, and that's when COVID hit, and then I didn't get to see my kids since March. So when March came and um, all of that was just focusing on preparation on my knee, rehabbing and you know, going to the gym and just you know, mentally prepare myself uh, for the 2021 season and um, just getting things done and taking care of the little things and um, checking in with my family, see how they're doing in Hawaii and stuff like that. So uh, when, came, when school started came in September, that's when I was locked in and I was ready to go. I was feeling healthy and stuff like that. So um, preparation through all of that too was getting my kids ready to as well, you know, keeping them safe. So, you know, with the, all the COVID-19 is, you know, um, with my kids is to, to keep them safe first and then we'll further them uh, as steps goes on the way with their education and stuff. So, but it's been a busy year since January all the way to now. It's been a very busy year. Um, there's been tough times that, that um, you know, off and on the, in the classroom and stuff and off and on the field. So, but it's been great. It's been a grind and we've just been, putting our head down is just going to work. Yeah, and you touched on your injury, which I'm glad that you mentioned that. So now that you are able to look ahead to 2021 and you yeah. had a chance to check out the schedule, anything that stands out to you that, that uh, you know, you're going to make sure you mark down circle on your calendar? <laughs> no, not really. I, just, I was just happy to see the schedule come out, man. I was so excited, you know, when, when they announced the 2021 schedule coming out. It was just like, you know, butterflies going through my body and just like, man, it's just crazy just to see rugby again, you know, it's, it's been, what, six to seven months that we haven't even touched the ball yet. And so it's, it's been, you know, like Lucas said, it's, it's just great to see the boys again going to this training and missing, you know, the laughters and getting along with the boys. And, and I think we have a, a really great, great, great staff behind us as well. We coach Sean and Sean Davies, Sean uh, Pittman and coach Kristen and Matt. So they've been, we just preparation for 2021. It's, it's just so exciting. So it's just good to see rugby back and I'm just so excited. <laughs> and I can see Lucas smiling as well. He's nodding his yeah. head in agreement. I know you guys <laughs> feel the same way. So.